Hey guys, Tony George, DocSports.com here, Gambling 101 Series. We're going to be talking about handicapping Major League Baseball. We are off an epic year last year at uh, here at Doc Sports with Tony George Sports. Uh, won over 140 units and $100 player was up over $8,100 last year. It's one of the strongest sports for me every year. And I thought I would share with you just some basic handicapping principles and and as always with daily sports with this many games, less is more. Bear in mind that the Major League Baseball season, not even counting the postseason, is over 160 games. Uh, so there's not one single game that's that important to anybody until way late in the season. Uh, so teams take night off, nights off. Uh, how did the White Sox beat the Yankees with, you know, their their ace on the hill? Well, they got a series with Boston on the weekend. It's a middle of the week game. They didn't give a rat's ass. That happens. So you got to be careful, especially laying big numbers in Major League Baseball. Uh, my discipline is one bet a day, maybe two. And uh, we got we gained all those units and made all that money last year on the tortoise and the hare method. Slow and steady wins the race. Never bet over minus 150. Keep the wagers down. Stay the hell away from parlays. It's a discipline. You have to practice it or uh, you're not going to win money. That's the bottom line in Major League Baseball. Let's talk about some of the outs that, uh, let, let's talk about outs. First up, first up, you got to get outs. Every pro better I know has every app in town here in Las Vegas for every sports book and they shop their lines. Why would you lay 120 when you can lay 108? Why would you take plus 135 when you can get plus 145 over here? Uh, that means uh, at the end of the day, the philosophy is this. You're betting into numbers. You're not betting into games. Okay? If you have one outlet, get two. If you have three outlets, get four. Okay? Shop your number. Okay? Units gained at season end using this. Oh, that's only plus 15 cents different. Because you're playing a 10 cent line. Okay, most be sure you get a 10 cent line, not a 20 cent line. Okay, but at the end of the day, you can gain, you know, 20 units a year doing that. Wait, you're smart. That's what you're doing. Okay, 10 cent lines, money line betting, you know. Um, take advantage of those. Books have them all over the place, they offer them. Okay. A lot of people want to know about playing run lines. When you've got, you know, a uh, minus 230 favorite with a solid starter against a weak sister or struggling on offense, you know, yeah, lower the line. Take it from minus 230 down to minus 125, 130. But don't do it every day. Because sometimes big favorites against weak sisters don't give a crap. I alluded to that early on. 160 game season. Not any single game is that important to these teams. It's not like the NFL where there's 16 games and you better win 9 or 10 of them or you're not even going to sniff the playoffs. Okay, Every game is important. Every game is calling all cars. Same thing in college football if you want to make the BCS Final Four. Every single game when Alabama's playing Tennessee Juke, some junior, you know, Tallahassee Juco, that game's important. You know, worst team in the SEC. That game's important. We got to bring our A game. There's a lot of parity. Nobody playing Major League Baseball is crappy. Every guy playing in a Major League Baseball uniform for a Major League Baseball team is a freaking baller. Tell you. See? So, especially, you know, if you want to look at underdogs on run lines, one thing I will tell you is this. Say you have two really good teams going at it with two stud starting pitchers, two good bullpens, say where the total is under seven, six and a half or six. Might be a good time to take a look at the underdog. How many times are you going to see a 3-2-2-1 two, two, game? Then you take the plus one, one and a half line. Run line is minus one. So a team's got to win by two runs. You know, if you took Kansas City, you know, plus, you know, 190, you know, against uh, New York on the road with their best pitcher on the hill, you know, on the run line, it's 3-2 game, you win. Okay? Also, remember this. 
There's two types of bets here, listed versus action. Always bet listed, listed pitchers only, not game action without them. You know, remember that 60% of the handicap in any Major League Baseball game is starting pitcher and bullpen. Okay, if the starter's not in, for any reason he scratches late, tripped and fell, cracked open his knee on the stairs coming out of the bullpen, got the flu, they decided to rest him because they got, you know, they want to give him added rest because they got a huge game on deck that weekend. They want to use him in instead. So always bet listed versus action, you know. That is, ab action means you're betting the game, regardless of who's starting. So always, bet, you know, pay attention. You can bet them that way, anywhere. One other thing I like to, you, Tony, what do you look at uh, when you handicap a game? I'll tell you basically the areas I handicap. Starter, bullpen, slugging percentage, on base percentage. And I look at last five games. You don't want to start handy, you know, you get three, four, five, six, seven weeks of the season. If you're handicapping season stats instead of last five game stats, you're going to get in trouble. Because that's not a true representation of where the team is at right here, right now. You know, with 160 games and seven months of baseball, whatever it is, if not more, teams get in cycles. They get in good cycles and they get in bad cycles. And that's when you fade or take them. Just bear that in mind. That's absolutely key. Um, how many times do you see a good team with a good pitcher uh, have a 5-1 lead in the sixth inning and they lose 6-5? to Because the bullpen sucked. There's a way to kind of avoid that. It's kind of like betting first half lines in the NBA, which I'm real successful at. You can bet first five innings. Utilize this strategy. How many times bullpen give a game away late? They clearly were in command with their uh, pitcher. And, you know, you want to, and then you start studying pitchers. How many pitchers go past the fifth inning? This guy consistently pitches in the sixth inning, seven, early seventh inning, many times. You did those first half, you know. Uh, I've seen so many starters pitch seven innings, eight strikeouts, one hitter, no runs. And they lose three to one. Okay, first five innings is also a way. You always want to look for underdogs in Major League Baseball. You never want to lay over minus 150. You may make a stretch at minus 160 in a big game, but for the most part, um, bear in mind, only three teams in Major League Baseball last year had a winning percentage of over 60% in 162 games. And two of them were in the World Series. So look for dogs in Major League Baseball, especially home dogs. Also bear in mind that total plays are minus 110 bets, just like football and basketball. You're 11 to, 12, 11 to 10 odds. You're betting 110 to win 100. Mix in totals on the money line betting. Don't stretch yourself out on the number. Uh, you can average home and, a, home and away stat run stats for any game, for any team. And look at pitching and bullpen numbers and overall team batting average against left and right-handed pitchers. Teams perform differently between left-handers and right-handers. Look at those tendencies on those teams. It makes a difference on left and right-handed pitching and hitting against them as well. How do they hit left and right-handers? Where are they at? Are they on the road? Are they at home? You know, and always remember, good teams take nights off against weak sisters. No one game's that important, you know. Look at the look-ahead spot scenario. Scheduling comes into play in day-to-day -day sports, just like it does. Scheduling is a huge handicap in the NBA. So let's say you got Boston on the road at, let's say, Kansas City. And Kansas City is probably going to stink again this year in 2019. Um, and they got the Yankees on deck at home that weekend. They're going to be looking ahead to that series. The Kansas City series, they just want to get through it. So look at those look-ahead spots. You might find value fading good teams with a big underdog in look-ahead spots, you know, playing someone good or a, or a hated rival in the next series. You know, if, if, if the Cubs got St. Louis on deck, they hate each other. That's a huge rival. If the Cubs got St. Louis on deck and they're playing, you know, Somebody crappy in the middle of the week. They're playing the, 
you know, the D-Rays or the, you know, whoever on the road, they might not have their A game. They were looking forward to that weekend series. You know, you might be able to find, you know, a couple of handicaps in there that might give you some advantage on a big underdog. But always remember, look at those three last three to five game stats. Keep the volume low. You know, stay disciplined in your money management. You're going to make a lot of money wagering Major League Baseball. If you have any questions about it, DocSports.com. Top guy over there last year. And that's saying something because there's a crap load of really good. There's not a bad handicapper over at Docs. To be able to have that feather in your cap gives you instant credibility. We're going to have a big year in Major League Baseball. Come join us. In the meantime, I hope these tips helped you out.